Good morning, writers. Um, welcome to Monday or Tuesday, depending when you're watching this, of MEA Week. So uh, today we are going to talk about leads and, or the introduction to your paper. This is a critical point. Um, you want your reader to want to read your paper and they're gonna make that decision within the first two paragraphs. So as a writer, you wanna make sure you spend a little bit of time crafting the exact lead that is going to lure your uh, reader in. And we're gonna have a little fun with this. There is a pair deck for you to complete, and I want you to take notes in your interactive student notebook. And then um, you'll go back, of course, to your paper and work on your introduction. Uh, make sure those first couple of paragraphs really grab your reader. Okay, that is it for today. And then Wednesday's work, I want to do a dialogue. I want you to be razor focused on the dialogue. Make sure the words are exactly as they were spoken uh, because that is going to create that authentic dialogue that makes your paper seem real. So even when I was going through, Caroline said, um, Mom, could you like not be so you? So I'm going to go back to my paper and I'm going to add those likes because she likes to say like, how I like to say really. Uh, but it's really important that you do this. Uh, make that dialogue super accurate. And that is all you have to do on Wednesday. So today you're going to work on leads. Wednesday, you're just going to go back, check, revise every bit of dialogue and make sure that it is exactly what has been spoken. Um, and if you don't have enough dialogue in your paper, then that's a good day for you to add some dialogue. Okay. Thank you, writers. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye. Okay, just a quick word before we get started. When you are at home, you are expected to do the Pear Deck. And so what you are looking at is what I see. So after, um, at the end of the day, I go through the Pear Deck to make sure that everybody at home had an opportunity to do it. And as you can see, it says three people did not respond. Well, one of those uh, people was me because I was at class. But the other two are out of our class. So I just want to make sure that you understand you have to write your responses in the Pear Deck. Um, this is an exercise that I want you to do, and it's going to help you become a stronger writer. So please take your time. Make sure that you put your name and your class and your hybrid. Um, that may, it makes it easy for me to check your work. Okay, thanks. First thing you're going to do is pull up your notebook and you I always start by looking at my table of contents remembering what I did last and where I'm going so if you remember last week we did the lesson how do writers use figurative language and today we're doing this lesson how do writers capture their readers attention this is all about grabbing that attention. So I'm going to go to that page in my digital notebook. And if you are a um, hand copy, you have a hard copy notebook, you're going to just write that at the top of your page. How do writers grab the reader's attention? I love this idea of like, you had me at hello. It comes from that Jerry Maguire movie. And so you're going to have this page open, and then I want you to go ahead and pull up that Pear Deck. And when the Pear Deck asks you how you're feeling today, I think this is so funny that the pear changes. So I think I'm just going to be, well, I'm pretty happy today. I'm going to put happy. Okay. And the first slide you're going to see um, says, you had me at hello. The researchers discovered that you have 27 seconds to make a good first impression. So that's a funny thing to think about. Your paper is that way too. 
uh, let's let that beginning of your paper make a great first impression. Um, at the right, you're going to see some different story starters. And I would like you to copy these into your notebook. So it, that's going to take you about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even 20. You don't have to write the whole thing, but just make sure you have enough that you understand it. So we have that dialogue conversation. That's when the writer starts off with just dialogue. Hurry or you'll be late. I called my mother from the bottom of the stairs. Today of all days, you want to be on time. Um, if I had only known what the day would bring, I'd be staying in bed. So not only does that spark your curiosity uh, to see what might be coming, it, it's a real fun way to start a story. Uh, the other, a question. Have you ever had a day you wish you had stayed in bed? As I rush, rushed to catch the bus on what seemed to be a perfectly normal day, I had no idea what was ahead of me. Again, the writer is giving you a little bit of preview uh, to what might be coming. A vivid description. Uh, sometimes we start with the setting. I know in that book, Talk Everlasting, one of the hardships is that uh, Natalie Babbitt started with the setting, but the setting ended up being so important. For those of you who have read that book, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, sometimes that's where you start with a vivid description of the setting. The sun was warm on my back as I raced towards the waiting school bus. The worn le leather seat greeted me. Friendly voices hummed all around. With a jerk, the bus rumbled down the road. So super vivid, super vivid description. That's one way to start a story. An interesting fact. Shock has been known to kill 10-year-olds. Now, obviously, that's a hyperbole. It can cause their brains to explode and their hearts can stop dead still. These facts raced through my mind as I stood dumbfounded. Again, she starts with a hyperbole, uh, calls it an interesting fact, which it's not actually, but um, that's kind of a fun way to start a story as well. And then a sound effect. Here she's starting with one of those onomatopoeias we talked about last week. Buzz, the sound of the alarm clock droned in the room. I struggled to wake up. With a start, I sat up in my bed. That was the big day. And I, this was a big day and I had to be on time. Again, sound effect, interesting fact, vivid detail, a question, dialogue, conversation. All of those are interesting ways to start your story. Third, this writer decided to introduce her piece. Now, the next thing you're going so to she do says, is My go grandpa. to that. Personal always narrative tells example. me that people who laugh at their own mistakes will get everyone else to laugh along with them. Yesterday, I learned that he is right. Stay in line, Mrs. Martin said. I knew right away that my friend Naomi wouldn't be able to cut. I looked at Naomi and frowned. Soon the line would move faster and I would follow along, hoping that there would still be pizza. So this writer did a lot with those two introductions and that are the, her introduction when in those first two paragraphs. So she hints at the larger meaning um, the story is going to convey right away in that opening. And she also starts with dialogue, pulling us right into the action and even giving us a little bit of her inner thinking that she knew that her friend wasn't going to be able to follow. So right away, she kind of makes me want to read. And that's a big thing. That's a big deal. Um, you know, the beginning of your papers have a huge job to do. And so we are going, and that's a, that big job is to make the reader want to read. Um, in the next five minutes, we're just going to have a little bit of fun. And we're going to try out different beginnings that perhaps this writer could have used. 
So I'm going to put my name and I'm going to put my hour and I'm going to put my hybrid and then I'm going to start, I'm going to try opening this up with a question. So perhaps I would say, um, have you ever wondered, capitalize, have you ever wondered what potato, um, what mashed potato pizza tastes like? Question. Well, I found out the hard way. And then maybe that is my introduction. So I'm going to say question. I'm opening up with a question. Oops. I want to put that first question. And then I'm going to go to the next one, a vivid description. And I would write vivid description. And I would start writing and maybe I would say the cheese melted around the mashed potatoes and that was going to be my lunch. I don't know. I But that is what I want you to do and see how many you can do. Um, maybe there's an interesting fact. Maybe it's a plop. There go the mat, my pizza and the mashed potatoes. Um, so go ahead, have a little bit of fun with this. And then the next thing you're going to do is go back and revise your own draft. I want you to try out at least three different beginnings. So take a look at your first two paragraphs of your narrative. Try out three different types of beginnings. And then when we get partners and you do your partner review, you're going to ask your partner which one captured their attention um, and made them want to read on. So Make sure you do the work here today. Um, this should take you about, you know, 40 minutes as to actually go back and really work through your draft. So you will be working the whole class period. That is it. Thank you so much. Okay, so your Wednesday work this week is just to do a dialogue check. You're going to ask yourself, is the dialogue in my narrative exact? Did I write the words exactly as they were spoken? Now, obviously, you're going to have to try and remember um, the best you can. So uh, just think really about the person who's speaking, how they deliver their words, and, and write exactly as you can remember it being spoken. Uh, the closer you get to the way things were said, the more authentic your piece is going to be. Uh, for those of you who don't have as much dialogue in your narrative right now, or you don't have any dialogue, you want to make sure that you add some dialogue. So that will be your charge for the day. Okay. Uh, enjoy Wednesday, adding that dialogue and making it exact. Next week, we'll talk about punctuating that dialogue. I know that's one of everybody's favorite things to do. And uh, that is it. Enjoy MEA, and I will see you back in school next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.